Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. It's Desk of Lady Ada. Coming to you live. It's me, Lady Ada, here at Moi Desk. With me is Mr. Lady Ada on camera control. He is the voice of reason you hear in the background. Uh, now, more like the voice of Cassandra, so... The voice of warning. <laughs> sorry. Um, I can tell you the future, but you ain't going to do anything about it. Yeah, you're not so let's do it. some engineering, because we have some problems to solve in the future, and they're not going away. There's plenty to do in the world of engineering, Lady Ada. That's right. And you can help them. That's right. Well, uh, so this weekend we actually did a couple... Uh, st- I'll, I'll actually show off us. I did a STEMA board... And uh, I put together a couple of prototypes. So uh, first, let's just quickly look at this um, this uh, STEM IQT board I designed. So my favorite way to test these boards is I plug them into a feather with an OLED, nice big OLED display. So this is the MLX uh, 93, sorry, 9395. And this is an ultra high range magnetometer. Focus on that a little bit more, uh, I think. It's a little yeah. weird. There you go. Okay, there you go. And uh, what's cool about this is that um, it's not like magnetometers that are used in IMUs where um, they sense the Earth's magnetic field. This one is um, has a much wider range. It's not very sensitive, so you see that's why like the, the numbers are kind of jumping around. Um, but what it's really good at is if I have like a really strong magnet, it doesn't uh, saturate. Like you can see, it can it can handle uh, ranges of someone up to the, 20 microtesla. In the comments when we were... Um we posted up the little coming soon. Yeah. They wanted to know, like, when does it stabilize? Like, those numbers that are going... It just doesn't... The lo- the lowest bits are just a little noisy. I mean, you can oversample, you can filter. Yeah. But it's really meant for measuring, you know, 10 to 20,000 microtesla. And so, you know, if you're going to have, like, 0.1% um, noise, that's going to show yeah. up like this. It's just that normally we have very high accuracy, high precision, but low range magnetometer. And this one, you know, normally we wouldn't look at this, the, the least bits. It's a 16 bit magnetometer, but the bottom couple bits are always gonna be a little bit noisy. So I guess people use these to like find ghosts or something. Um, for ghosts, but what they're really good for is um, if you have a joystick that uses a magnet, like you're, you're, you have some sort of, you know, not optical, but a, a non-contact 3D sensing element you can sense where the magnet is around the scent uh, around the sensor um and you can use one of these uh, uh magnets it also can be used for like a motor uh control you can like uh detect uh, magnetic flux coming off of your uh, motor it can tell you stuff like you know if it's noisy or if it's activated um but ditto it's good for it's good for magnetic fields not for earth but um I just kind of uh, like putting stuff on a uh, stomach UT breakout, so that's um, another one. And um, part of that, another board that I just put together, so I don't have a demo for it yet, is um, this little Stemma friend. Uh, you and I chatted about this a while ago, and uh, I got the PCBs a bit ago, but I haven't put it together till today. And this is. Um, Kind of like a little like I squared C pal. So it's got a uh, Sam D21. Um, so it's a Cortex M0 processor. I wanted to make it very inexpensive and USB C. And then it's got two STEM IQT ports and also a Grove port. So it's two I squared C connections. This one's a pass through and this one is like, you know, there's only one because Grove doesn't do pass through. And there's a mode button, a uh, little battery selector. There's a NeoPixel over here. If I plug it in, it'll, you know, it, it'll you know, enumerate so the NeoPixel will light up. Um, and then what I wanted to do is like print out like what I squared C addresses it finds or if it can like, you know, the flash on the Sandy 21 is large enough. I actually think I could program it to know about every STEMA board we have and it could tell you which one you just plugged in. So if you plug in like the MLX 9395, it would be like, hey, I detected this and here's some readings. Like maybe it wouldn't do like every possible thing that the library can do, but it would give you like the, the basics so you'd know that it's working. Um, and I think that'll fit on the SAMD21. SAMD21 is a pretty big chip. I think that we can fit quite a few libraries on there. Maybe like the, you know, maybe the, the 20 most popular STEM IQT boards. So yeah, kind of and I'll, I'll tell you just like an old school um, vision of electronics and technology. So one of the ideas a long time ago, if you're in the job, it was like, they were trying to do stuff with devices and they had like Genie and it was this like, you'd plug in a device on the network and it would say, hey, this is what device I am. And it would self-identify what 
device it is, its location, and things that you can do with it. It would have like, hi, oh, here's my like .ini file, and here's yeah. how you interact with me. So you know that was like 30 years ago almost, and so we're getting. Um, it's probably 20, but it feels like longer. Um, but we're getting closer to being able to do that with with open source, open source hardware, and all of the things that you like to do in Arduino, Circuit Python, and more. So one of the things that'd be cool is with all of our stemmas, we have like you know 50, 100 of these going, is to be able to chain all these together and be able to see, hey, what what do I have and what can I do with them? Yeah, like a little, like a little, like a science experiment thing. It's kind of like half like a bus pirate. Or like an Asquith C driver board, but it's like going to be specific for stemmas. And I think like, you know, for people who just want to, like, you know, we always see these like $500 science kits where it's like there's this massive display and it's like, you know, really expensive add-ons. But what if it was, you know, just very inexpensive and you, you plug in all the sensors you want and it goes into your computer and it's like there, you know, your data pops out in like CSV format. So I think that could be um, kind of interesting, you know, it would be like a, a, and I like having a little graphical display because it could give you feedback, like what it detected and what the data is. And I think that would be helpful because one of the, one of the things that's really difficult about electronics is there's no visual feedback for a lot of stuff. People don't know when something's working or not, when, whether something is detected. And I think I2C is, is a little bit like that too. It's a little bit like either it's working great or like who knows what's wrong. And yeah. I think that this could maybe help determine, you know, like if, uh, I, I, uh, you know, if the I2C port is, is stuck, it would tell you and it would like try to fix it. So, you know, maybe it could help you um, sniff the I2C bus if you needed. So, yeah, so this is my idea for um, a little Stemma friend. So we'll see how that goes. This was kind of like, I just, I kind of threw it together. And the idea was like, you know, can I make it be like, you know, 10 or $15 or something? Um, very inexpensive. So it wouldn't run CircuitPython. This would only be an Arduino. If it becomes really popular, though, maybe I would make a version with the Sam D51 so it could be a yeah. CircuitPython board, but it's meant to be inexpensive. Yeah, I think this will be like a lot of other boards where we get started with this, and then we have, you know, an entire family, and some have beefier chips, and we just add more functionality. Yeah. It could also be an accessory to an existing um, CircuitPython-powered board. Yeah, it's okay. still it's still in the mix. Unclear. I mean, I just I just got the bootloader going on it. You saw I just enumerated so many to the Arduino core for it. I'm gonna be able to do a couple of videos and I'll I'll play with it. But I've definitely always wanted to have like I use a Sele for I squared C debugging and it's great. But I wish there was something I could just plug in line. Yeah. Let's well, answer a question that's related to this. First off, uh, shout out to Valadir in Vietnam. Hi. Um, is it difficult to have products that support both Stemma and Stemma QT? Do you think it will land on one standard? Well, I think, so the, this board actually, so the, the Stemma originally was going to be the JST 4 pin, this larger connector. And I did a couple boards with this larger connector, but I did have a bit of a, like a problem, which was this connector is so large that when you look at like my little sensor breakouts, this, this connector is just massive. And when SparkFun started making these quick boards that used this one millimeter pitch connector, like I was kind of like not so sure about it. I was like, oh, it's such a small connector. Is it going to break? Is it going to crack? You know, is it going to be hard to insert? But then I actually tried it out and I was like, yeah, this is a really good connector, um, the JSTSH. The reason that I have both on here, even though I've pretty much only used Stemma QT, which is like, it's cute. It's just the small version, same pin out, but it's, it's half the pitch. Um, is because this is Grove compatible. So the, the two millimeter pitch, it works with Grove sensors and there's like dozens and dozens of those. Um, and people really like them. So I thought, you know, let's have two I squared C ports. This could be, because you can do that with a SAMD series. It, it's happy to give you as many I squared C ports as you have circoms, um, which is like four, I think on this chip. Um, and then I thought that would be helpful because there's, there's a lot of people who you know, they'll have sensors that are um, I squared C and, and use the Grove connector. So that's why I have the teeny version, which is what I use, which is like the pass through style, and then um, the JST PH, which is uh, Grove compatible. But I'm not really making devices with this connector anymore. Um, only on the host. I'm not making devices because it's, it's such a big connector. Okay, so QT is probably going to be where it's at. QT is where it's at. For larger devices, um, like I don't know if I have with me oh so like on this um machine braincraft hat 
So you have, I have a Semi-QT for I squared C, and then these are the two-pin speaker ports. Like speakers are two-pin, so you're going to use two-pin. But I still like these larger connectors for, you know, buttons and um, neopixels and speakers and stuff. And the reason is, is that um, I think that you want, like, more power capability. One of the only annoying things about these smaller connectors is they can't, source a lot of current they kind of they, they're kind of sort of max out at a couple hundred milliamps but what i like about these jsts these big ones is they can do an amp plus and so for like neopixels or like speakers you do you do want a little bit more power and so i i do like these um for the larger devices and um so you'll see like we have neopixels with a jst connector that fits this or we have a speaker that powered speaker that can plug into this so you know, it's a little annoying because it's like, well, why do we have two? And it's like, well, because I wanted to maintain this groove compatibility. And then I ended up deciding I wanted to use a smaller connector. But, you know, there's adapter cables between the two. So it's not okay. It's not the end of the world. All right, what else do you have going on? Okay. So another thing that matter, um, I worked on this tester, which is for um, this really beautiful grayscale OLED. I've shown this on um, Desk Lady before. And uh, so I designed the tester. So the tester is really easy. You plug this on and you press the reset button and you get these like grayscale circles and some text. And then that's how you know that it works. And it's actually doing a, a, quite a bit of testing of all the pins. Um, and, you know, when you're when you have a device, you know, testing something thoroughly is challenging. Um, and so I thought we would look at the code real fast about how I, I do testing. Yeah, sure. by the way, um, when you buy um, basically like throwaway cheap electronics online... They usually don't do the you, test. Well, you are the tester. Yeah, they, they no, give me... you, you are the tester. Yeah. And uh, they just don't care. And that's a good business model for some people, but that's, um, that's one of the things that you can not do and save a ton of money. So we do yeah. a full test on we all our test. products. Okay, so you want to show uh, the code? Yeah. Right. So here's, here's one of my... Read the font bigger. Oh, can I? You can do that in Arduino, yeah. yeah okay. Look at that. Um, so one of the things that I do is um, I use the I squared C address checking capability that's built into Arduino, which is what I probably put on that Stemma friend, which is that you can begin a trans transmission to an address and then check if it got act or knacked. So I squared C, the, the, there's this ninth bit that gets acknowledged or unacknowledged. So it allows you to detect whether something is connected on that address. Um, and so using this, you know, in my loop, I'm like constantly testing. Um, instead of trying to connect to a device at the I squared C address that it's on, I actually do a little mini scan. I'm like, okay, check if that address exists. So, you know, by default, the address is 3D. And then there's one pin that's used to set the address low on the OLED. And so I set that pin to be an output low and then the address should be 3C and then I check it. So it's just a really quick way to like do I squared C tests. Um, and then finally, I want to test the reset pin. So when the reset pin is low, I should see neither address, right? So I set the pin low and then I check for both 3D and 3C. And if I do find them, I, I consider that a failure. I return and I start the loop over. Um, and then, you know, finally, when I get out of reset, then I can actually test the OLED and, and display stuff. But um, toggling pins and then checking the I squared C address and then, like, you know, enabling SPI and then checking if I squared C. Like, this is a very quick and easy way to um, check different pin functionality without having to, like, do, like, a whole, like, I squared C read or begin or, like, configuration. It's very, very quick. And also means that by the time I get to this point in the code where I'm connecting to the display, I know it's going to be there. You know what I mean? Like it's not, it, it's it's not like oh the pins are floating or something. I know that I'll be able to um, to read from that display because the I squared C address is there. Um, okay, so I'm going back to the overhead. We'll show the mechanical style. So mechanically, what I do is there is a pogo pin on this PCB and each pogo pin aligns with one of the pins on the breakout or a test pad. And then I like to have mounting holes on our PCBs. They're just great in general. I think mounting holes are a good idea. But one of the side effects is they're awesome for um, making the test alignment jig. So I don't have to do anything like laser cut or custom. When the holes line up, the pogo pins line up and then you press 
to make the connection. And then, you know, I just have to make sure that the standoff is just, you know, a little bit taller than the pogo pins. And so I don't end up like crushing the pogo pins. I bottom out on the standoffs first. Um, so speaking of, I thought I would uh, segue every, to every week we the Great do, Search. Yeah, every week we do something uh, called The Great Search with DigiKey. And this week is with no exception. So we're going to do it. All right, okay. what's the great search this week, Lady Ada? Okay, a great tune, you can hum in the shower. So this week, um, you know, working on this tester, I needed some aluminum standoffs. So these are called male-female standoffs, but there's, um, you know, there's hex type, there's nylon, there's aluminum. And I think a lot of people don't realize you can get um, standoffs and um, connectors and spacers from DigiKey. And uh, the price is quite good, especially when you're ordering, um, you know, 50 or above. Uh, so I used to, you know, I would have kits that have standoffs or spacers in them. Um, check out DigiKey. You may not realize it that they have very good prices on, on these mechanical connectors. They don't just sell resistors, capacitors, and chips. It's also hardware. So. Um, well, there's so many things there. How could I find it? I wish there was a segment online each week called Desk of Lady Ada, The Great Search. Well, part of it is showing how to search, but the other part is telling you what you can search for. Because yeah. I think knowing that is half the battle. Um, so let's look for uh, Stand Off. Maybe we'll do another segment one day called Tell Me What to Do. Tell Me What to Do. <laughs> and then, then you can go search for it. Okay, so... Yeah, there's a whole category called board spacers, standoffs, fasteners. They've got the stuff. Okay, so as usual, let's look for active parts. And let's do normally stocking. Okay, so next up you can see that there's like a whole bunch of things here. So let's first um, go to the overhead and we'll look at the standoffs that we, we need. So for this tester, I'm using uh, these standoffs and um, the hole that I'm connecting into is about uh, 0.1 inch. And, um, you know, unfortunately, I live in America and so I use Imperial. And so if it was, um, if I was using millimeters, I'd be like, oh, it's, I'd probably want M2 or M2.5, but unfortunately, uh, we're stuck with inches and so, and so I'll have to tell you that this is an M, so this is a um, number 256. <laughs> just like totally illogical. You're like, how would you know that? You just do. So I need a 2-56 threaded um, standoff. So let's pick that first. So back to the computer. And we're going to look at the screw and thread size. And uh, there's number two, there's like two and 256. I don't know what's up with that. You can also get metric, but I'll say it's sometimes a little easier in the US to get imperial sizes. So you stick, if you stick to one, you just always stick to that. Um, something new in the DigiKey revision that they recently updated their search is you don't have to option click anymore. This is like, you just click whatever you want. I don't believe that used to be true. I think it used to require option click, but I'm so used to this now that that's fine. Um, okay, so that really cut down all of the parts quite a bit. Um, one thing that's really cool is um, I love these surface mount nuts. This is not what I'm looking for, but these are awesome. Um, I use them on the matrix portal. I've used them on um, the uh, TFT gizmos and like things, you know, things that attach to circuit playgrounds. Um, they're pick and place surface mountable standoffs that you that you pick and place onto a board and then you can thread into them so it's like and they're like really mechanically strong because they're like bonded you know completely anyways um all right so there's all sorts of these are also i think uh surface mount standoffs um but i want ones that are um well let's just go back to the overhead and i'll show you i want ones that are like this style so i want ones that I screw in from the bottom and then they have these little posts at the top. And the post is what allows me to align the circuit board, right? So I want to have the, the post stick out. So these are called um, male-female. So you can go back to the uh, computer. 
It's gonna, we're gonna go back and forth a couple times. So it's called male, female, threaded. So let's apply. Okay, so we have now much better options. So this is what we look, we want. I love this mouse over because it really tells me like, am I even in the right place? Um, next up, we get to choose the materials. You know, I tend to do aluminum, um, but you can use nylon. Nylon's not conductive. All right, the next thing is we need to know the height of the standoff. So let's go, sorry, one, one last time we're going to go back to the overhead. I don't really do much than this, so it's fine. Okay. I mean, like, this is kind of my thing. Okay, so we want to know the, the distance between uh, boards. So this is, you know, when we look at the pogo, we, it has to basically be like about a, less than a half an inch, right, a half an inch or less to uh, make sure that it doesn't bottom out. Okay, so back to uh, the computer. We'll do our last selection. Um, we have uh, a couple options here. We have uh, 7 sixteenths and then 1 half. So we'll, maybe we'll pick these two. Apply. And then I like aluminum. So I'm going to go with aluminum. Yeah, why is that? Because um, it's like easy to work with. The nylons, they can strip. I, th I like that the aluminums, you can really torque the heck out of them. Um, there's a couple options here. Um, the difference is whether they have iridite plating, which I don't exactly know why you need it. I've never used iridite, but apparently it's available, but we don't need special plating. So now we basically have two options. I ended up using um, this one, the 7 sixteenths, which is the exact right size. And um, so here's the thing that is, is people don't realize is that when you're, you know, if you get like just one, you know, it's going to be a dollar because like they don't want to sell you just one. Oh, just a question. Well, I'm just going to keep us up with comments and more. Yeah. So uh, the the jingles in people's heads permanently. That was by design. Good. good yeah. Uh, Manthe says, thanks for sharing this. Uh, Yuga wants to know, is Pogo pins the term part we'd search for? For those pins, not the posts. Like if you yeah, want... it's it's actually not. Um, they're called spring contacts officially, but I don't know anyone who ever calls them that. They're called pogo spring pins. Spring contact. It sounds like a, it sounds like a uh, app in the app store. I know. Like spring contacts. Spring contacts. Yeah, I'm it's gonna the new Bumble. I'm gonna connect with rabbits. Yeah. Um, uh, no. So so if you want to search for it, you need to search for spring spring contacts. Right. Maybe we'll do it next week. But I wanted right. to do the standoffs first because a lot of people don't realize you can get standoffs. So I, you know, I used to get standoffs from McMaster and McMaster has like, you know, also every kind of standoff in size. When you're buying, you know, a couple, like five, you're going to, they're going to basically be like 20 cents cheaper on McMaster. But once you get to 10 pieces, um, the price is basically the same. It's within four cents. And when you're ordering like a large quantity, the price actually is much better than McMaster. So you know, I think a lot of people, when they think, like, hardware, oh, I'm going to go to, like, McMaster Car, or I'm going to, like, go to another, like, you know, small parts online store. But I actually found that for screws and standoffs and, um, you know, other, like, mechanical hardware pieces, if, as long as you're buying more than 10, the pricing on DigiKey will probably be better um, than if you bought it from a, a specific hardware store. Because I think that the hardware store is like, they, they're very niche, and so they're like, well, we can kind of charge whatever we want. Whereas DigiKey is like, they really want to get the large quantity orders. Like, they want you to put this into manufacturing. So it's um, good to keep in mind, you know, once you get to 1000 you know, the pricing is $0.30. Cents. I'm like, that's as good as it's going to get, right? You're not going to be able to get standoffs for much less than that because it's that's what the aluminum costs um, to machine. So this is the hardware. This is actually what we buy when we make testers. Uh, at Adafruit, we get you know a couple hundred of these at a time, and um, we use them to build um, our standoff-based uh, pogo testers, and that's how every board gets tested. The Adafruit factory. All right. All right. And that's the great search. And that's the great search. Okay. Where in the world is that part I need? The great search with DJ King. All right. So here's a question. Yes. Um, I think this is a general question, so you can just answer it generally. I'll answer it uh, generally. Can you do a custom circuit board for one of your items? And I, I think they're, um, they're asking a general question, so I'll, maybe I'll try to answer some of this. 
Uh, yeah, you can indeed make a custom circuit board for one of our items. We can um, do a version of something that goes along with other items. We do open source hardware. You can make a custom yeah. circuit. Yeah, people board. do take our boards and then they they yeah. download the files from you know the EagleCAD files from GitHub and they spin their own version. Yeah, if you think about what Stemma is, Stemma is a custom circuit board that goes along with lots of our items. In fact, let's just go back here. Here's the... Uh, yeah, so like even this one, this is a yeah. Stemma board and then... Featherwing is just a custom circuit board that goes along with one of our products. So that's one of the cool things about electronics is you can always make stuff to make things connect together. Yeah. All right, we got through the questions, got through everything else. Uh, a little bit of programming note. Um, do us a favor. Uh, I got two favors. Two. One, yeah, one, you know, if you're thinking about getting electronics, get it from Adafruit. Thank you. Um, we do have some openings in adabox.com. I didn't get the graphics in for this show, but I'll be getting it. Adabox is shipping in like yeah. a week or two. And you can remember the URL real easy, adabox.com. Adabox it'll, it, it'll forward it to uh, adafruit.com. We're, we're designing the adaboxes that they're great projects for you to do at home, either alone or with your yeah. family. So, you don't have to go outside and share them with people. Yeah, so <laughs> they're very at home based. Yeah, we're, we're, we're very conscious of the current reality. So um, a lot of people are going to want to hang out inside, do projects, and it's not going to re require a workshop and 15 people. Um, standalone, does everything you want to do, but um, there's only a few. We do thousands of data box per quarter. Um, yes. we, we manage to ship during the worst time ever, and we're probably heading into the next worst time ever. We are we are over 95% booked right now on Adabox. Yeah. So, but we have a couple left. Yeah, um, and, and as far as what's in the box, check out previous Adabox videos, Adabox um, clues that we've dropped about things. Um, literally, there was a clue. There was yes. a clue in one of them. So um, go to adabox.com, and it's always a surprise. Great, great for gifts as well. But we're we're on track. You know, this this year we did have one box that got delayed due to it, the fact that we it got New York was completely shut down. Yeah, it got delayed because millions of people are infected with a disease that's currently occurring on this planet. But, but we're now getting better at it. We, we're actually back on track. We're back on schedule. So yeah. This one is going to be the Halloween box, and then the next box is going to be yeah. the holiday, winter holiday box. We're, also, we're, we're designing the box specifically for... You know, people who may be at home and they won't be able to leave. And so, you know, what, here's are, one what thing, are some fun projects you can one, do at home? Here's one thing that we can guarantee. Yeah. We're shipping this out before the election. This is coming to this, you This out Halloween. in a box, yeah. yeah. And so, it will comfort you. It's yeah. way better than any election. I think instead of listening to the news or watching the election coverage, yeah. you could work on Ada Box stuff and have a really good time. You, you may need to fill your days with lots of projects to uh, avoid... Things. So this one is Halloween. It ships in like a week or it's so. In a week, we only have a few shipping. slots open. That's why we're promoting it now. And then um, if you sign up for Ada Box now, that means you get a holiday one, and uh, you're probably not going to be traveling over the holidays, or um, you probably shouldn't. So this is a good time to pick up a skill, support a cool USA woman-owned manufacturing company. Um, that's us here at Adafruit. We're still around, hanging in there. We can only do this because y'all add some things to cart once in a while. And uh, you know how we spent all that time testing the products and it worked out when you got it? Well, that means humans do it. So we have a bunch yeah, of this box. This box is like the, is a very high value one. Yeah. It's, it's a, there's a lot of really good goodies in it. And uh, Yeah, it's correct. This Ada box will battle anxiety. It's true. It will. It'll help you. It's very soothing. Yeah, it is true. There, we put in some soothing projects as well. Yeah, it's super true. I bought a um, scrub brush today at Bed Bath & Beyond because it felt great to buy something. Uh, yeah. Buying things feels good. Um, okay. Well, that's our show for tonight, everybody. We'll see you next week. Okay. Um, thank you, everybody. Tuesday, we have JP's product pick. Wednesday, the 301st 3D Hangouts with Noah and Pedro at 11 a.m. Yeah. We have Show & Tell at 7.30, Ask an Engineer at 8 p.m. And then on Thursday, we got JP at 4 p.m. And then on Fridays, we got deep dive with Scott. So we have a full week of programming for you to learn something because you may as well. And we, you know, it, we're we, all non-contact. We, we, you may we, as well. If you place an order, we will ship it safely and securely yeah. to you. And At some time in the future, things are going to be better. And so do you want to come out the other side with some skills and feel good about it? Or do you want to be just completely damaged and scarred up forever? I say... Go ahead and learn some skills along the way because 
because time is going to pass no matter what you do. It's true. You may as well learn some skills along the way. That's uh... Oh, and then last question. Any plans <laughs> to make the Ada box available to Australia? Here's the deal. The Australian shipping costs knock out the price for us to be able to do it. So what we do is we put standalone Ada boxes yeah. in the store and you can order it. But we include shipping as part of Ada box. So Australia, um, and this isn't our fault. Um, it's just as far as possible. It's like the farthest yeah. you can get. So um, we don't have a way to make the shipping costs lower. We can't say, here's an Australian price, here's a US price. So just get the standalone Ada box. It'll be in the store right after Ada box ships. Thank you for your understanding. Yeah, it's it's challenging because we have to ship thousands of these. So we have to make it reliable because people want to get them, you know, and they're, they're timed. Like this one is the Halloween box. You have to be able to get it by Halloween. So we yeah. have to... We can't pick like the cheapest, you know, air air post sits in a boat for three months. We have to yeah. use Internet, very reliable for, for the international shipping. locations. We use DHL, and it's, yeah. customs prepaid, all this stuff. Took forever to figure it out. We did it. There's just some locations where it is. That's why a lot of uh, that's why a lot of delivery boxes. It's it's space. Yeah. You know, but I, you I know, get it. If you're in Australia, you kind of deal with this a lot. It's yeah. just like Sorry. you're, you're kind of used to like oh yeah, shipping's a little weird sometimes. Okay. Yeah, you don't have earthquakes. I mean, just all bets are off about what's going to happen. Yeah. You might have earthquakes. Okay. <laughs> this is why it's important to learn skills okay. so you can detect these earthquakes that are going to come along. We should okay. do a seismography box. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. We got an exciting week for you. Yeah, that's it. Learn some skills. See you next week. Come out week. the other side damaged and full of skills. 2020.